least. The Scottish Greens have become the fifth of the parties who won seats in the last Holyrood Parliament to launch their election manifesto. They're promising a radical alternative to the UK government's spending cuts and renewing their commitment to independence. But will voters be put off by the prospect of a tax increase, even if it's only a halfpenny for Scotland? I'll be asking their party leader, Patrick Harvey, in a moment. But first, here's Kenneth MacDonald. They may be small, but they're survivors. The Scottish Greens saw their representation reduced from seven MSPs in the 2003 Holyrood election to just two last time. Now they're hoping to bounce back by offering an alternative to what they say is a failed economic agenda. Among the manifesto pledges, replacing council tax with a land value tax. The tartan tax would be invoked from 2013, with a Scottish variable rate of a halfpenny in the pound to raise an estimated £200 million a year and university and college tuition would stay free for Scottish students studying at home. Half a billion pounds would be spent on a home insulation scheme. The fourth bridge replacement and the Aberdeen bypass would be cancelled, saving 1.8 billion. And Scotland's energy needs would be met from renewable sources by 2020. We must defend Scottish public services from the savage cuts that have been imposed by Westminster. I think this is very important to the private sector too. Um, as it's people who are employed in public sector who, who buy products, who go out to restaurants, who keep the Scottish economy going. We mustn't forget that. The Scottish Greens also want to see the restoration of large-scale ecosystems like peatlands. And they're resolutely pro-independence. They want a new convention on devolution. Well, Patrick Harvey is the co-convener of the Scottish Green Party and he's here. Uh, now, your flagship policy is to put up income tax. That should have them rushing to the booths to vote for you. Our flagship policy is to oppose the UK government's cuts, which will be profoundly damaging to our society. It'll worsen inequality. It'll be damaging and risky to our economy and any prospect of recovery. Right. But and it'll be damaging put, to the why environment do you want to as well. Put people's taxes up. What we'd like to do is raise more revenue from the wealthy and from bigger business and save money for most ordinary households and for small businesses. We can close the gap between rich and poor, which has grown so wide over right. recent decades but, but, but and grew even what, wider what in the recession. About, what I find odd about this is that you have an analysis of the financial crash, which basically says that we should be spending to some extent our way and investing our way out of recession, Indeed. not just cutting. Absolutely. Public spending. Now, Profoundly most people who agree with you would say that in the short term to put taxes up is actually a really bad idea. I mean, people well, on your side well, would I say it's a bad idea. Well, I don't think so. There's been an opinion well, poll just in the last few days that says the majority of Scots agree with the idea no, of I'm raising revenue opinion. from what the wealthy. What I'm talking about is economists who agree with your analysis of the crash would say that, yes, invest your way out, by all means borrow more, but don't put taxes up when, de when spending is depressed. Well, this is interesting. You're having a debate with me about analysis and response. This is what's profoundly missing from the parties that claim to be the mainstream centre-left in the UK. The response to the economic crisis and the ideas about a new kind of economy rather than simply refloating the old failed model, they're coming from groups like UK Uncut. They're coming from campaigners like the Robin Hood tax campaign. They're coming from some of the trade unionists as well. They're not coming from the mainstream right, centre-left well, parties. But, 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 we are offering fine, that alternative. Ju just to continue at this higher level, which you um, clearly want to occupy, I mean, the other thing is that I think economists would argue if you do raise taxes, then you should spend it on capital spending, not on revenue. Yet something like half of the plans that you have for the extra money you want to raise are actually on revenue spending. Well, it is a balance. We've talked about a, a capital investment fund for public transport, for example. We've talked about reversing the cuts to housing. You know, the, the capital investment that's been taken away from housing is profoundly damaging. But we are, yes, also talking about revenue because we're all okay. aware of household bills being under Briefly, pressure. Briefly, what's you know, a hotel tax? Well, the idea of a, a per bed charge, some European cities and American cities do this without having any damage to their tourism industry, but they're able to raise some, some revenue locally to invest in public services. I think if you speak to hoteliers at the moment, they'll tell you they're finding it difficult to get people sleeping in their beds overnight without your tax. The evidence is pretty clear, I think, particularly from the states, that a, a small charge, a pound or two per bed per night, is not going to be a disincentive to anyone who's making a booking for their holiday. But it can be an additional source of revenue. We're not committing to that. We're saying let's consult on giving local authorities the option both to raise revenue fairly and progressively from people who can afford to pay and indeed 
uh, right. to borrow to invest in things like publicly owned renewables, a source of revenue that no future government can ever take away. Right, from the highfalutin to the down and dirty, what is your ambition in this election? How many MSPs would you like to get? You presumably would like to go back. But how many others do you expect or hope to get? There's no reason that we couldn't take a, a seat in every one of the eight regions in Scotland if we have a, a good night, if we're successful at asking the electorate, regardless of whose name you want on the door at St Andrew's House or Butte House, regardless of who the next First Minister should be, who do you want them working with? Do you want the next government beholden to the votes of the UK coalition parties, the Lib Dems and Tories who've designed the cuts agenda, or do you want them to have an alternative? If people can be convinced that the Greens are offering an alternative, not just on the environment right. and on the economy, but also on protecting public services, they can elect Greens in every region of Scotland. Right. Patrick Harvey, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.